Welcome to Hardening Your Perimeter with Open Source Tooling. So, why should you listen to me? My name is Simon Nollet. I work in cybersecurity. I'm a penetration tester. So I get paid to hack a new company and tell them how I did it. Uh, I did over 250 pen tests over my career. I have over 10 years of experience in cybersecurity. I also like to share my knowledge with the community. I've been involved with the Hackfest for seven years, and I'm a security trainer for five years. My core values, I really advocate for honesty, transparency, and integrity. One of the reasons it's really important to me is I don't think people can make informed decisions if people are either lying or even worse, hiding the truth. Uh, my current areas of focus technically are Active Directory and Parameter reconnaissance external and internally. So that's what I'll be talking about today. So open source tooling, the reason it's really useful is you get more brain power to fix the same issues. And most companies have the same security issues. They, do, they just don't really talk to each other. Transparency, so you can use the code base and adapt it to your organization. It th they also have a fast reaction since you have access to the source code, you can modify it really quickly and use it immediately. I'll give you an example of how I reacted. Uh, I was part of the reaction for Log4j vulnerability. It released the 9th of December 2021 and the same day or even after, a couple of hours after, there was open source tooling available to test for the vulnerability. So it's really important to scan your perimeter so you know um, what assets are impacted by it. And it took six days until the release, at least for the vendors what we had, to release a, a scan for the Log4j checks. So you would have been vulnerable for at least six days. And you don't even know how they check it. Is the check really worth it? Is the check really the same among your organization? Uh, is the check required to be authenticated? So if you're not authenticated, it won't work. So let's just compare it with how the attackers, at least the exploit traffic was in the meantime. As you can see, um, immediately after the public exploit was released, there was already exploit traffic coming to pretty much all the perimeters in the internet. So if you wait six days to be able to know um, what assets you have that are vulnerable, you would probably be already exploited. So we're going to define what's your perimeter. Basically, you can see it as three categories. What you know is exposed and um, what you know exists. What you don't know it's exposed, but you know it exists. So maybe a dev instances, test instances, you know people are de developing it, but you maybe don't know that it's exposed externally. Uh, and what you don't know it exists and you don't know it's exposed. So maybe it's an asset, a temporary asset, a cloud instance that's been forgotten, stuff like that. So I'll use an analogy here, but let's say you hire a pen tester to assess your house. What do you expect the pen testers to test? Probably the doors, the, um, the windows, you can see all the entry points to get inside the house. So you're happy, he comes back, the pen tester comes back, and he gives you the report, he managed to gain access to your house using a tank. Did we really increase the security posture of the company? Well, no, because the house was never meant to be protected from a tank in the first place. So in most instances, we don't really take into account the threat that needs to be, well, what would target our company. So nothing can be secure 100%. We just need to make a risk-based decision and a technical decision on what we need to protect and how much. So let's talk about mapping your attack surface since that's what I want as an attacker. And probably you want to know why I find this interesting. So we do a subdomain discovery. You, you, we take your main domain and we try to guess and assess at the list of possible targets for the organization. After that, we do a port scan. We check what services are hosted in the environment. Is something left unnoticed or unsecured? After that, we enumerate what service and what application are running on the perimeter. 
We try to find vulnerabilities and misconfiguration in the perimeter. Mainly, my main entry point is weak passwords. I mean, even after 10 years, I'm still using it because it works. What I want you to remember is to implement regression testing. It's useful as an attacker to know if the target becomes more vulnerable over time. But I think it's the best asset in the defense side of things. So let's use SubFinder. SubFinder is a tool from Project Discovery. It gives a list of possible subdomain for your organization. Again, I'm using Tesla here uh, because they have a public bug bounty program. It's no way to target them. What I like to do is use AltDNS, again, an open source tool to create a better list to check for the subdomains. What it does, I'll give you an example, is let's say we have vpn.tesla.com. It will try vpn1.tesla.com. It will try vpndev.tesla.com. Basically, try tries a lot of permutation around the worlds that are already used via um, the domains that are found. After that, since we have a list of possible subdomains, we need to try to resolve them. So shuffle DNS to the rescue, again from Project Discovery, but this is a wrapper around, around mass DNS, which basically means you can use all the DNS servers over the internet to resolve really, really fast. In this example, I've been able to uh, resolve a multiple hundred thousand list in 50 seconds. So what target I find interesting after all these things, um, you can check for dev, QA, and test instances. The reason it's interesting is if it's in development, it may not be as secured. If it's in test, they might not even know it's exposed. And if it's in, in QA, it's the same thing. Admin instances. While they may know it exists, if I find a vulnerability there or a misconfiguration, I probably gain access to more data. So the impact is going to be better. And metrics. While metrics and numbers can mean anything, in this instance, it helps us understand what is new. Because let's say we have a 200 HTTP port open in a given day. If the next day I have 250, something went wrong, or at least there was a major uh, production push, so we might want to look into it. You can also look for anomalies that way. If all the, the perimeter are secure over 80 and 443, but uh, there was a 8080 port open, I might want to look into that. Service left exposed and forgotten are really a prime target for me. So how do you know what service are exposed? So Nabu to the rescue, Again, from Project Discovery, there's also Nmap or Mascan to achieve kind of the same result. Basically, you map the ports that are open on a list of targets. Again, what do, what do I look for? Basically, all the management ports are interesting to me because they gain access to the server. That's what they're meant for. Also, um, SMB is not able to have 2FA. So if I have access to the Windows server behind it, it's impossible to have a second factor over it, so it's interesting to me. Remote desktop protocol, kind of the same thing. While well, you can have 2FA, um, there's vulnerability there, and I maybe can get around it. And also the Ike protocol. While it's normal for it to be exposed, there might be vulnerabilities associated with it. I'm thinking a pre-shirt key. Uh, and if I can crack the pre-shirt key, I can gain access to your network. Data transfer services, basically any port that is used to transfer data. The reasoning behind it is the same. If I gain access to it, I gain access to probably probably gain access to sensitive data. So I'm thinking FTP instances, NFS, and since it's a UDP, um, not a lot of vulnerability scanners get it. And databases that are still exposed to the internet. Yes, I still see that. So you may want to um, secure that as well. And application. I mean, the applicative side, it's a whole other game, but AD for 43, it's always interesting to look at because you won't be able to protect it via the TCP layer. Also, abnormal ports. If all your company is using 8443, again, if there's 8443, it might be interesting to look at. So anomalies. So how do we assess all this data? Welcome to Nuclei and Nuclei templates. There's over 7,000 different checks over Nuclei thanks to the community. Here, welcome to Nuclei to the rescue. You can map the attack surface, but what's on the applicative side of thing? Here you see AWS bucket, but an interesting target for me in that instance would be the ADFS. 
because it's used to connect the infrastructure. So if, if I'm able to connect to it or uh, exploit a vulnerability on it, I may be able to connect and get useful data. So again, what do I look for? Access services, so anything that uh, their job is to transfer the external perimeter and the internal per perimeter. Lately, we've seen the event T vulnerabilities taken, taken by storm, but any VPN, any Citrix instances, any VMware Horizon, Outlook Web Access, I still see those. You can perform a lot of misconfiguration on those, mainly user enumeration. So non-misconfiguration, a good example of this is a UPS. Like a lot of um, network device that you plug into the net your network often have insecure default. In this case, it's default credentials. So you may be able to gain access to the system using a known configuration. You may want to look into it before you plug it into the network. Also, a good indicator that something is uh, interesting is if Nuclei doesn't know about it. They have so many templates that if Nuclei has no idea what it is, I want to look at it manually. Also, again, attack surface metrics. Uh, a lot of bug bounty hunters use this to get alerted on new subdomains that are found in a target, like a target that they hunt for. Also, something that's useful is a change on a website. Like if, if a major website have a change, it may be useful to look at as an attacker. Again, if I, if I find it interesting, you probably want to check it yourself to prevent me from getting access to it. What's important here is assess your perimeter. And if you don't know what it is, question it and close it. Put it behind a VPN, put it, don't leave it exposed over the internet if it's not necessary. That's pretty much how I breach it. Find a hidden server that maybe either the, the company is forgotten and gain access to it through that way. Because if they don't know about it, they might not have secured it properly. So it's a easier way in for attackers. So what are the benefits of Nuclei? Again, large database, over 700, uh, 7,000 templates. Easy to use, it's open source. It's a YAML file, so you can easily modify it. One that's interesting is you can modify the payload. So if there's WAF bypass, like in the log4g example, there was multiple WAF bypass that came or multiple payload to exploit the vulnerability since the community is so uh, brilliant. We always found ways to exploit it differently. You want to assess and retest pretty much immediately. If you find a new payload or something with Nuclei templates, it's easily possible. And it's open source. So since, for example, in the log4g vulnerabilities, a lot of companies have the same issue. So if we all put our knowledge together, we can pretty much improve the security together. So again, Nuclei, I use it to find known vulnerabilities, which there's a lot of CVEs, over 2,000 templates to find known CVEs. What's really interesting to me is find misconfiguration. In the example I've shown you in the UPS instance, you can check for default credentials in it, and you can only use metrics for it. If 200 ports are open in a given date, and the next day there's not 3,000, but 300, you may, want, you may want to look at what changed. So it's a useful tool as an indi indicator that something changed. So the benefits of using Nuclei, you can perform security audit. You can check at whatever you want on the time frame that you want. Like you can check daily, you can check hourly if you want. You can fix it quickly. Like if a template is given a lot of false positive, the, t the community will fix it really fast and you can do it yourself as well. You can adapt it to your organization and it's more secure by default. In, in the example, since a lot of people can look at the source code, if the tool is introducing a vulnerabilities, there is a good chance, a higher likelihood chance that someone will catch it and fix it. So what I want to introduce you to is regression testing. You can use regression testing for metrics. So you can check if a, a welcome password in your organization, you can test for it in your whole perimeter. So you can see the trends going down over time, hopefully the vulnerabilities as well. You can also automate testing. So in, in my case of the UPS example, you don't want to pay a sysadmin to check and reconfigure the default credentials of the UPS. You can do a robot for that and use the brain of the human to do more analytics. Also trust but verify. Like even if a, a procedure in your environment is to change the default password, humans can make mistakes, but also products can too. Like if you do a security update, a software update, 
or um, factory reset, you can lose the configuration. So you may want to trust but verify it still. So how do you improve security with open source tooling? Use your internal data. I can't stress this enough. You are the master of your own environment. So use the data internally that you have to assess your perimeter. Also use the old pen test reports. If you do them, they probably show trends on what was vulnerable in the environment and they might predict the future on what could be vulnerable, at least to what do regression testing for. Also, listen to your employees. Like when I was a consultant, I would say pretty much 50% of the things that I would advise, the technical people was already aware of them. They just didn't really have the listening of the management as they should. So you really use it as a meaningful metrics or inputs in your decision. And you can do customized testing. While a lot of uh, multiple environments are similar, there is tweaks in your environment that are really internal to you. Maybe it's just a procedure, as I was saying, a welcome password that's custom, a known vulnerabilities that you know is frequent in your infrastructure. You can test it with Nuclei. So what, do, what should I look for? The, the answer is the cat on fire. Let me explain. A lot of security nowadays, I feel, is reactive, meaning there's a fire in the kitchen, you hire some uh, firefighters, they go extinguish the fire, and then they come back, they go back to training. A month later, there's fires in the living room. You do the same thing, you hire firefighters, they go extinguish it, and they go training again. But what you should be looking for is the cat on fire in the house that's pulling the fire everywhere. It's the root cause that you want to address, not the symptom. So here's four takeaways that I want to take for the presentation. Implement regression testing. I can't, I can't stress this enough. Human can make mistakes, but software can make mistakes. So you really want to have an attacker view, a hacker view of your perimeter over time of, on what's going well and what's going wrong. Regression testing is a way to prevent it for, from going bad. And I'm pretty sure in your call, you're pretty much already doing unit testing. So do the same for your infrastructure. Proactive security, you can really see trends in your company and proactively fix them. An example is weak password. Even after 10 years, I still breach companies with weak passwords. Do you really need to hire a penetration tester to tell you that company name one is a bad password? Probably not. Conduct security audit, of course, like brain power and humans can find clever ways to gain access to your organization. So you will have data, real data, on what trends works against your company. Use that for regression testing. And provide security training, my favorite. I really do believe that people are not well, um, I really do believe that people are well intended. Some people can introduce security issues or security vulnerabilities. It's probably a mistake, but if they have the knowledge, they understand the impacts of their action, you will have less vulnerabilities and misconfiguration to begin with. Let's talk. So I want to hear from you guys, like either digitally or physically, if you're here. Uh, let me know if like you find this useful regression testing in your organization. It's a really good way to see your perimeter and have data, real data that you can act on. Uh, thank you for Project Discovery for the opportunity for sure. Thank you for the community of creating really useful Nuclei templates. Uh, you can reach me on Keybase and I have a small YouTube channel in case you want to learn more.